A young couple, Matt and Kate, move into their new home in upstate New York. Both of them enjoy the early times of being a young married couple as they start anew. Their new house requires renovations and repairs here and there, so they start to work around it. Upon organizing the kitchen, Kate sees a dead bird inside a cabinet and goes outside to bury it. She gets distracted by Matt, who talks to her from the window and looks back to see the bird disappear. While throwing away stuff that came with the house, Matt notices something weird in the wall, so he tears the wallpaper to see it better. In there, he uncovers a large door with a weird keyhole. In an attempt to unlock the door, he rummages through the pile of old stuff and finds the key. Matt inserts it into the keyhole and immediately calls Kate to tell her about it. They open the door together, and the lights in the hallway suddenly flicker. Matt calls the power company to report the problem, and Kate senses something weird about the room, so she follows him. The following day, an operator from the power company arrives to inspect the cause of the surges. To his surprise, the wires in the basement are ancient and intertwined in such a weird-looking way. When Matt asks if he can do anything about it, the operator says that he has never seen anything like it. Before the operator leaves, he tells Matt about the home's previous owners who got murdered inside the house. Upon hearing the shocking news, he immediately does his research about it. In an old news article, Matt learns that the couple who died are named Paul and Madeline Schaefer. Moreover, the identity of the suspect remains unknown and his alias is John Doe. Matt, being an artist, tries to draw John Doe's face on his sketch pad and takes a break from it inside the mysterious room. He finishes a bottle of liquor and wishes that he could have another bottle to himself. The lamp flickers, and to his surprise, another bottle appears. Matt examines the bottle and realizes that the room can grant wishes. Kate wakes up to the sound of flickering lights in the living room and goes upstairs to check on Matt. Inside the room, she finds him far beyond excited as space is filled with new stuff. Matt happily shows Kate an authentic Van Gogh painting and explains that the room can grant any material wish. Thinking that it is one of Matt's pranks, Kate laughs it off but realizes that her husband is serious. She tests his theory and asks for a thousand dollars. Matt rummages around the whole room and finally picks up the money Kate wished for. Still skeptical, she asks for a million dollars and just like that, they are millionaires. However, Kate finds it scary and walks out. Matt persuades her that they should have fun with it. The couple spends the whole day wishing their life away. Clothes, champagne, art, and money are just one wish within their reach. Matt and Kate's happiness are beyond compare as they drown themselves in expensive things. At the end of the night, Kate questions how the room manages to grant their wishes, but Matt tells her not to worry about it. For the following days, their fun and lavishness know no bounds. Every time they make a wish, lights flicker, and so does the power source in the basement. They celebrate their overnight wealth by partying together inside the room with drinks and gifts. However, the fun and action do not last long. Kate wakes up the following morning feeling empty as the material things fail to fill a void inside her. Matt gets concerned about it and surprises her with a crib, hinting that they should try to have a baby. Contrary to his expectations, Kate gets upset about the surprise as she already had two miscarriages and storms out of the house. Later, Kate returns inside and spontaneously wishes for a child inside the mysterious room. As Matt learns about it, he gets mad that she did not consult him before wishing for a baby. Both get into a heated argument, Kate claiming that she did it as a shortcut to motherhood. Without the possibility of a miscarriage and the pain of childbirth, Kate explains that they could be happy that way. Matt is utterly against the idea and urges Kate to bring the baby back to the room to wish for the child's disappearance. At that moment, the couple enters the room, but Kate tearfully refuses to give up the baby. Instead, she hands the baby over to Matt, but he could not carry out the deed as well. He could not get himself to wish for the baby to disappear and returns it to his wife before walking away. Eventually, both of them decide to keep the baby, and they become parents overnight. While on his desk, Matt spots his unfinished drawing of John Doe and does more research about the incident that happened decades ago. He learns that the suspected murderer is still alive in a psychiatric hospital. In another archived news article, John Doe says that the room made him do it. Not long after, Matt drives to the psychiatric institution to meet with John in person and ask about the room. At his arrival, a nurse warns Matt that no one has visited John in 45 years, except for news reporters, so Matt enlists himself as one. Finally, Matt comes face to face with a much older John and starts questioning him about the house, especially the mysterious room. Displaying a sinister smile on his face, John tells Matt that he has been waiting for this moment for a long time. When Matt asks why John killed the Schaefers, John tells him that was the only way. John brushes off the topic and instructs Matt to leave the house instead. He warns the young man to do it as soon as possible before it is too late. Before leaving, John says, the only thing more dangerous than a person who can't get what they want is the person who gets whatever they want. Matt stops by a gas station on the way home, but to his surprise, his cash turns into dust. Because of this, he rushes home and throws away the remaining money in the room to see if it will turn out the same. Then, he tries to bring the Van Gogh painting by the door, confirming his theory that they cannot bring the things outside, or else it will turn into dust. In a fit of rage, Matt breaks the walls to know the mystery behind the room, but to no avail. He only sees the intertwined sets of wires that are too difficult to track. Matt then tears a wallpaper and discovers a map of the house with guides of the connected wires. Meanwhile, Kate brings the baby outside, but Matt stops her, warning that it isn't safe. He doesn't tell his wife the real reason why they shouldn't bring the child outside. Not long after, the baby screams uncontrollably, as if it is in pain. While hearing it, Matt has second thoughts about helping Kate and the baby, but he eventually comes to their rescue. Outdoors, the baby mysteriously ages to a young child in a matter of seconds. Once they re-enter the house, the couple could not believe what is in front of them while looking at the grown boy. Later that day, Matt reveals that the room can grant anything that their heart desires, but under the condition that they cannot bring it outside. If they do, the thing ages and turns into dust. 
Kate replies that a baby is not a thing and is unaccepting that she cannot bring their son outside. She becomes fond of the boy who she claims to be her son and names him, Shane. For the next few days, Kate homeschools Shane and explains that he cannot leave home because of the dangerous germs outside. One day, Shane becomes impatient while Kate teaches him how to read, causing him to throw a tantrum. His whole life, Shane has never experienced how it is to be outside, all he has ever known is the walls of the home he can never leave. Later, Kate receives a package outside and locks the door whenever she goes in and out. She gives the package to Matt, who ordered it, and unboxes a brand new gun. Unfortunately, Kate leaves the front door unlocked and completely forgets about it. While she is busy playing the piano, Shane sneakily makes his way to the front door and opens it unnoticed. He sticks his hand outside and feels the fresh breeze, deeply curious about the outdoors. Suddenly, Kate notices it and rushes to her son angrily. She embraces Shane, relieved that he is safe and unharmed. To prevent Shane from sneaking out, the couple decides to block every window with planks of wood. That night, Kate wakes up to Shane beside her bed, asking if he could sleep beside her. The boy tells his mother that he wants to be with her forever, making Kate hold him closer. However, her words fail to bring ease to Shane's mind as he still looks worried. Matt spends the next few days practicing how to shoot with his newly purchased weapon. He then comes back home and sees Shane playing with a snow globe inside his art studio. Strictly, he orders Shane to leave immediately, causing the boy to drop his snow globe. Until now, Matt has not accepted Shane as his son and acts coldly toward him. Not long after, Kate comes in and argues about Matt not acting fatherly toward their son. At nightfall, Shane walks around the house and sees a map that leads to the basement. He sees the big power source with intertwined wires and eventually ends up in the room. Throughout the night, lights flicker around the house, but Matt and Kate do not notice it at all. When Matt wakes up, he sees a new snow globe beside him and the broken one from a distance. He immediately wakes his wife up upon noticing the flickering lights, already having an idea of what's causing it. The couple enters the room, and to their surprise, Shane made an outdoor area inside it. The room that once had four corners is now a vast forest where Shane enjoys building a snowman. Kate is completely mesmerized by the world her son has created for himself and joins in with his fun. On the other hand, Matt is enraged and grabs Shane by the arm to bring him back inside. The incident causes the couple to argue whether or not to permit Shane to enter the room and play. Matt insists that it is dangerous, but Kate thinks otherwise. While they argue, the phone rings and Shane answers it, despite not being allowed to pick up the phone or talk to anyone else. Matt grabs the phone from the boy, and to his surprise, John calls and realizes that the couple wished for a boy. From the kitchen, Kate listens to their conversation with another phone and overhears their whole conversation. John explains that it entails the ultimate sacrifice of life for Shane to go freely outside the house. If Kate dies, Shane can go out and age, like everyone else. Over the phone, John shockingly reveals that he was also a child granted by the room. John's mother killed his father before forcing him, as a young man, to kill her so that he could be free. Then, he tells Matt that he has two options, kill Shane and save Kate, or kill Kate and save Shane. After hearing the conversation, Kate leaves home, causing Matt to worry. She attempts to crash the car, but she could not bring herself to do so. Being alone with Shane in the house, Matt acts frantically and even trashes his studio. Not long after, he prepares dinner for Shane, who sits across from him in the dining room. The curious boy keeps asking him questions, and with his growing annoyance, Matt loses his cool. Shane is told that he is not a real boy, and he does not have parents. Still, in a fit of rage, Matt drags Shane by the front door, but the boy runs back upstairs out of fear. In Shane's room, Matt realizes that he hurt him and sincerely apologizes for his actions. The boy asks if Matt could read to him, and they end up sleeping beside each other. As Kate arrives home, she is still confused by her emotions, but the sight of Matt and Shane lying beside each other brings her peace. Later that night, the couple shares an intimate moment as Shane watches. The boy waits for his parents to fall asleep and steals the key to the front door once they do. The following day, Matt and Kate discover that Shane went outside after seeing the front door open. In another area of the house, they are stunned to see Shane age overnight though he still has the mind of a boy. He now appears to be a grown man and even holds his parents at gunpoint. Once Kate gets him to calm down, Matt throws himself at Shane and the two get into a fight. Being thrown onto the floor because of the brawl, Kate slowly loses her consciousness. Moments later, Kate wakes up to Matt, informing her that Shane died after being accidentally shot. Devastated, Kate goes out and breaks into tears, unable to cope with Shane's death. Matt comforts and carries her back into the house, where she continues to grieve. Back in the room where the fight happened, the real Matt gains consciousness and looks for his wife around the house. Still, in a state of panic, he notices flickering lights and gets under the idea that Kate and Shane, who has shapeshifted into Matt, are inside. All the while, Kate is still clueless about Shane being the one in front of her instead of Matt. However, she realizes the truth of the person's identity in front of her after Shane makes one of his habits of eating ice. Matt tries to make his way inside the room with all his will by breaking the wall and passing through all the wires. He finally reaches the room, which is now a forest full of woods. It reveals that Shane used the room to enlarge the outdoor area and duplicate the house inside it. He shapeshifted into Matt to kidnap Kate to the cloned home and take advantage of her in a sensual way. Determined to claim his wife back, Matt runs through the woods and finally arrives at the clone home. He breaks in just as Shane forces himself on Kate in his bedroom. After hearing Matt break in, Shane gets up to prepare for another fight. This allows Kate to get up and leave, but she sees two versions of Matt across the hallway. Her dilemma at the moment is beyond compare as the two have an uncanny resemblance. One of them grabs her by the hand, but she pushes him after calling out Shane's name, which grabs his attention. Shane loses his consciousness after falling down the stairs and transforms into his real appearance. Meanwhile, Matt and Kate cannot get out of the room because Shane keeps wishing for them to be trapped inside. 
After countless tries of arriving at the same place, Matt stops and thinks of a way out. The couple comes face to face with Shane by the door, who advances at Matt and stabs him to death. Afterward, Shane comforts Kate but realizes that they are just clones and replications of the real ones. Matt and Kate quickly run to the room's exit through the woods while being chased by Shane, who grows more aggressive after being tricked. At the real home, Shane attacks Matt but is pulled with him outside. Realizing that it will cost his life, Shane runs back to the door, but Kate immediately closes it before he could get inside. Shane screams, Mommy! While Kate looks at him as he ages into an elderly man. He walks slowly as his body decays and eventually turns into dust. Despite his faults, Kate still cries over his body, having spent a significant amount of time with him as her son. At that moment, the couple clings to each other after a traumatizing day. A month later, they move into a smaller place and settle in peace. But not for long, Kate looks in horror at her pregnancy test that comes out positive, unsure if the baby belongs to Matt or Shane. As if things are not bad enough, a lamp flickers, and she gets under the impression that all along, they might still be in the room. In the story, Matt and Kate have completely been blinded by the riches that the room has to offer. With the unexplained magic, they become more careless with their desires, even wishing for a child after a series of miscarriages. The flickering light at their new apartment at the end gives a slim possibility of them still being in the room, or a glitch in the building may also cause it. Among the most shocking revelations is Kate's pregnancy which could be Matt's or Shane's child. The night before the big incident, Kate and Matt made love, but the grown Shane also assaulted her in the clone home. The mystery of the film does not only revolve around the wish-granting room but, finally, the father of Kate's unborn child. <laughs>